This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, summertime, I think finally here in the Rockies, we're thrilled to see the sun out and the rains the amazing thunderstorms with hail yesterday um, go away for a while. So let's get into some ways to not bring rain on your parade, but how about creating sun in your life with all the doodads, the apps, the tools, the gadgets, the gizmos that are out there. And with me throughout the hour is going to be one of my favorite geek people. We call her our resident geek girl, Kelly Johnson, who is also the uh, founding partner of Cornerstone Virtual Assistance, which was started to offer clients a creative option to build a collaborative, long-term personal relationship with a virtual assistant that supports the foundation of their business, whatever their business is, without being limited by geography. That means if you're in Rome... It will work. So with that said, hi, Kelly. How are you? Well, hi, Judith. I'm doing well, and uh, thank you. I'm really excited to talk about one of, I know, for both of us, one of our favorite subjects, as you said, and I love the analogy of not so much the rain, let's move into the sun, and how people can really be able to use all these gadgets, gizmos, and actually have some fun with them and see how well they can work for their business. <laughs> exactly. And you know what I our listeners, Kelly and I do a once a month what we call our tech toolboxes for all the authoru.org paid up members. And what it does is we, we coach um, authors and uh, how to manage the technical and creative and administrative projects for your business. That's what Kelly's business is all about. We just do a hands on, over your shoulders, move over, give us your computer keyboard so we can get you up to par and get you going type of thing. And so, with that said, um, why don't we just kind of jump into some of the, the tools. I know this month we're going to be doing a very cool uh, tech toolbox on uh, Pick Money Key and Canva, but we've got a lot of other little goodies on our short list of what we like, and I know one of the ones that you love is Wufu. So let's talk about what Wufu can do for an author in a book. Sure, absolutely. And once again, i that's one of the things I think that I find is fun about some of these gizmos and gadgets, as we call them. I love just some of the creative names they come up. Like we said, Wufu. I mean, it's, it's W-U-F-O-O, and the website is um, that exactly that, wufoo.com. And basically, it's a web application that helps you build online forms. So one of the nice aspects is if there's maybe, you know, some – besides just like name and email, if there's a couple questions that are maybe multiple choice or a fill in the blank or a short answer that you want to collect from people to either maybe prepare them for a teleseminar or a webinar that you're doing or you know maybe just a, an event you want to ask them some questions ahead of time, see what they respond with, you can very easily just you know click, drag, and drop by using Wufu as the tool to put that form together on your website that you can post. And what I really like about it as well is Several people use MailChimp as the service for sending out their broadcast messages, and Wufu has a free application that you can go ahead and connect a list in your MailChimp account that you set up to your Wufu form. So as soon as people fill out all that information that you've posted in that form on your website through Wufu, when they hit submit, it will automatically go into your MailChimp account, the list that you've indicated, and it will all be recorded right there. <laughs> So is this kind of a, a variation, Kelly, that where you would be looking at the ability to um, literally, um, uh, for example, that you would have the ability to almost like a, um, a uh, what we call it, an Excel sheet, almost like instead of doing a separate Excel sheet, this just imports it and takes it and runs with it? That, oh, and I'm sorry, could you say the last part again? 
So what I'm saying is that if you, is this kind of uh, looks like, sounds like, feels like, instead of doing a separate Excel sheet, uh, spreadsheet, that you would be posting in all these names in, blah, 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 separately to import into a data manager of some sort. This really does, you push the button and it just does it. Is it? Is, yes, that, is this I mean, that's what it's exactly. Instead of having to manually collect and say, as you said, okay, this person sent the response to me. I got it by email. I have to literally go to a spreadsheet, type in their name, their email, the response to question one, two. You don't have to worry about that. It will just go ahead and collect, you know, put all that data that you've indicated in your forms. It will send it over to MailChimp, and then you can export it from there as one spreadsheet that already has all the information populated. <laughs> Right, so I'm assuming Constant Contact and, uh, and other applications will be similarly compatible? Uh, actually, uh, they don't have that app that I'm aware of, at least not yet. Uh, Woofoo uh, doesn't for Constant Contact, so that's uh, one of the unique features as far as with MailChimp that it, that it has. So that's why I left Constant Contact. Well, I didn't know that, but that is one. Of, it sounds like another reason. All right, so let me ask you this then. Um, if you incorporated and collected um, emails, etc., and you wanted to then import them into a MailChimp account, then is there a opt-in type of, of situation that, that someone would have to go through if they got an email from you via the MailChimp vehicle? Uh, as far as with MailChimp, they don't have a required like extra opt-in where they would have to you know click. You you have that ability if you want to activate that, but they do ask you you know a series of questions where you have to make sure if you're importing a list of names and emails into MailChimp, you know they will say make sure that people you know this list they did give you permission to be on it. You know you're not just buying a mailing list and uploading it. So they do go through and ask you that, but you don't have to have that extra step of they have to then confirm, especially like if you as you mentioned, if you wanted to switch from Constant Contact to Mailchimp, for example, because you wanted to use a different service because it was going to fit your needs better. Um, that would be one example with that. All right, so that's good to know. All right, so Wufu for all of those who are listening in, um, it's and it's is it free or is there a fee? Um, they have a free version and they do have some paid accounts, so you can look to see which one of those options would be best for you. And do you know actually what would be the separating factor? Maybe I should kind of look this up as we are on the line here. One of the things, uh, the free the free version only allows you to create um, up to three forms total. Um, so for most people, just if they have like a form here or there that they might need to create, that usually works very well for them. So if you need anything more than uh, three forms that you need to create, you would need to look into one of the paid account versions. Okay, so that sounds good. That Absolutely. sounds like a good tool to have. All right, another one you have on your list, and, and of course we have used a gazillion times, um, and I'll, I'll tell about some of the apps I've used before, but is Wordle. Um, which yes. is fabulously wonderful because it's totally free. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so Wordle, the website, it's wordle.net, so W-O-R-D as in David, L-E, dot net. And basically what it is is you can create what they call word clouds from text and make it into an image. And with the creation of your word cloud, you go in and you type in to their field a list of all the words that you would like to put in your word cloud. So, for example, if you wanted to create a word cloud on book publishing, you would start making a list of, you know, anything from, you know, printing to book covers to literally the word book publishing and start making your list. And once you have your list together, you go ahead and click on go you over and it'll show the word cloud and you can go ahead and choose what kind of layout? Do you want it mostly horizontal, mostly vertical, half and half? You can apply some different uh, font styles. They'll, they'll give you a list, and you can kind of play and see which font style maybe fits you know, what it is you want to have in your word cloud. You can also change a, a color theme and pick one of their themes. Or one of the great things is if you already have some branding colors for your site, you can go in and actually enter your own colors so you can be consistent with your branding. 
And one of the cool things that they let you do as well is some of the words you might want them to be a little larger because they're a little bit more important or you want them to have more focus. So you just repeat that word, you know, four or five times when you're initially typing the list for your word cloud, and that's how you can have control also of making some of the words appear even a little larger um, in the final version. So, and then you can make them go vertical or horizontal and, exactly. and, and play around with it. One of the cool things that I did with Wordle for one of my clients who was a teen, and she was doing a book, and it was, uh, it, it was it's called Behind Closed Doors, about teens for teens by teens. And what we did is I, I just had her go into each one of the chapters, identify the key words you know, throughout the chapter mm -hmm. and which one were the most important. So literally we went through that exercise of, of listing out and the ones that were the most important keywords were maybe printed three, written three times. So they would be very large. And then the others would scale down to two or one time as they, you know, enclosed it. And what we did is then what Vivian put it together and she played around with it because we were just wanted the, the black and white and a little gray version because this was a black and white print book. Um, and we played around with it, so we weren't worried about colors, although she did print some colors off, I will share that. <laughs> but we played around until she could find the image that was, that was appealing to her and that would look good on a printed page. This book was going to be a 5 by 8 uh, size page, and we went through it. And it was very fun. Number one, it was fun for me because she didn't know about it. So here I got <laughs> to tell the kid something. Um, but the other side of it was it really did customize her book, and so each chapter started with a, uh, it had a part page, because there's only seven chapters in this book, seven sections, it had a part page bigger, and then at the very top of it, it had a, a, a smaller illustration on the opening of the chapter. So it was very fun to integrate that and bring it together, so that's, that's a great idea. Now, Kelly, how can you, um, I think one of the challenges is saving them. Um, and is there a way to make them private that only you get to use them and save them, or there's another version that you just make them public? Um, there is, like you said, I know sometimes you might not want them in their directory, and I believe there is the option where you can say save, they call it, I believe, save to their gallery so that you can mm -hmm. um, have it out there. But one of the, actually, this leads into another <laughs> really cool tool that I um, find I use quite frequently. I also, um, instead of going to either my print screen or, you know, trying to see, because they don't always have an exact, like, go ahead and save as an image when you get to the end of your creating your word cloud, I like to use my tool called Snagit. Um, and basically what Snagit does is it allows you to go ahead and you can pick the option to capture whatever you created as a, they call it a read. So basically when you open up Snagit, you can just go ahead and put a box around, you know, your word cloud, and then you have the option to go ahead this and save it. This is your guide to book publishing. Have Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Ditchute Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Is there a book in you or another author you will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being good with it? If you already have a book out, you'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author U is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author, it's not. Join Author U today through its website at authoru.org. Follow Author U on Twitter at Author U and on Facebook at Author U, where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily. Author U, where the author goes to become seriously successful. Every picture tells a story. 
And it's a truism that people do judge a book by its cover. Nick Selinger and NZ Graphics have been in the business of producing superior graphic cover design and interior layout for self-published authors, independent and traditional publishers for years. He has developed a reputation for... Excellent work, fast turnarounds, and best of all, affordable pricing. NZ Graphics also produces ebooks and book marketing materials such as posters, sell sheets, postcards, bookmarks, business cards, logos, and more. Books designed for his clients have won multiple book awards, including Best Book Award by U.S. Book News, multiple Evie Awards from the Colorado Independent Publishers Association, Indie Book Awards, the San Francisco Book Festival Award, and Freedom Medal Award from Valley Forge. Visit www.nzgraphics.com or call 303-985-4174 for more details about making your book the success it should be. Mention that you are an FOJ, friend of Judith's, and that you heard about NZ Graphics on your guide, guide to book publishing. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, my faux pas, what happens is sometimes I get so wrapped up in our conversation and I forget to watch my cues, and so we cut Kelly off and didn't finish up um, our, 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 the, the whole dialogue on how she went in from her checking her wordles um, before you save in perpetuity, so to speak, and one of her tools that she does, which I use a lot too, is, is good old-fashioned Snagit, S N A G. Uh, t.com. So Kelly, why don't we start over that because you, what you were suggesting is to go up and take a snapshot of it with Snagit and then preview and see what that baby looks like. Is that correct? Um, yes, exactly. So not only being able to preview it uh, you know, as an image, but then especially if you're happy with it, you can go ahead using the Snagit tool and save it then as an image on your computer. So that way, especially as, as we were talking before the break, with Wordle, if you did not want what you created to be uh, what they call in their gallery where the public can go and view it, um, that way you can sort of skip that step, not have to worry about that, and still be able to save it onto your computer. Right, because and 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 we should say also for our listeners, certainly look at the word whole public gallery because if it's public, it means it's public and free, and you may see something that has all the little goody elements in it that someone's already put the work into to create, and you can go ahead and snag it yourself that's um, right. and, and take use to it. So that's what the public gallery is means it is open to anybody and everybody. That's right. And one thing I did also just want to mention about Snagit, they do have a free trial, um, so that way you can test it out, see if you like how it works for you, and then um, it's a $50 one-time fee to go ahead and purchase it if you feel like it is going to be a tool that you want. And it's actually through TechSmith that you'll find it. So you'll go to techsmith.com, T-E-C-H-S-M-I-T-H.com, and then you'll go to the Snagit section on the website. Yeah, and I, and I just want to add on to that, that Snagit is, I found, an invaluable tool. It, number one, it's almost a no-brainer to use, um, although I think the newer version is a little bit more complicated than the other one. Um, but it is a, a pretty much a no-brainer, but $50 to have something that any image that you see that you can click, you know, like it's like having a camera on your computer that you can take a picture of and store it to come back and re-look at it. Again, or you use your own information, or a lot of times when I'm talking with people um, and I'm showing, looking at something on a website, I will go in very quickly and take a picture and then email and say, this is what I mean, look at this, 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 and this. If you're doing webinars mm-hmm. or anything like that, Snagit is a great example to use that you can incorporate in on a slide and drop in the image. Um, and I know that when I did a, uh, a, I have a, crowd, a great crowdfunding uh, webinar that I do that I went in and I was snagging things right and left to show examples 
of campaigns that were going on that they could see from rewards to the videos to fill in the blank. So it's an excellent tool. The $50 is a no-brainer type investment for you to do in its lifetime. So that's techsmith.com. Highly recommended by both of us. All right, Kelly, you have something that you'd like to play around with called Short Keys. Why don't you explain to everyone what Short Keys is about? Sure, absolutely. Um, so once again, that's, uh, it is shortkeys.com. And basically what it is, it's a text replacement utility to insert blocks of text um, into, for example, like an email message where you just put in a couple of what you call a user-defined keystroke to go ahead and it will populate all of the content. So essentially what that means is you go ahead into short keys and you say, you know, I, I get a lot of these que you know, frequently asked questions on, you know, say, book publishing, writing, and uh, cover design. So if you want to go ahead and have some um, responses, because maybe the, to each of those areas you tend to send a lot of the same information because you've got maybe some good resources or some recommendations that you want to make sure when you're replying to those frequently asked questions you receive, you've got that same information and you've got some consistency. You just go into short keys. You go ahead and say, when I type in like this acronym, um, I will go ahead in my email message, type in the acronym, and it will automatically then just populate that entire response that I want to make sure I send on book publishing or you know cover design. And then you just add your email signature, and you can go ahead and click send. So especially for people, as I mentioned, where if you get a lot of the same frequently asked questions, it's great that you can go ahead and populate responses that have you know set links or information you want people to get. And all you have to do is open your email, you know, click a few of the acronym, you know, whatever acronym you've decided to define that response and just see it populate and click send. So it's a great time saver. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right. There's, there's a, a variety of things and I know that we've all gotten these emails. We, everyone has gotten the, um, sometimes these emails go on forever that are pitching things to you and you will see in them um, uh, little buttons or a sign that says register here, buy now, don't wait, blah, 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 blah. And those, those kind of images can be made very quickly by a wonderful gadget called Glassy Buttons. So Kelly, tell us about Glassy Buttons. Sure. Um, and once again, that site is glassybuttons.com. It's a free tool. And basically, it's an online button generator. So if you need to have, as you were saying, Judith, a register now or, you know, sign me up or, you know, yes, uh, purchase this, add to cart, you can actually go onto Glassy Buttons and you'll see at the very top, um, it will have the shape of a button, and you can also click in their gallery to pick different shapes of buttons. So if you wanted either more of a circle or a square, something more oblong, whatever you know, choice you like, and then you get to actually pick the colors. So once again, you can keep with your branding. You can type whatever it is that you want the button to say, and then um, you go ahead and you know, have them create that button, you download it, and once you have, and it just saves it as an image file. So then you've got that button image, you can then upload it to your website or your blog. And once you have it on there, then you can go ahead and associate that button with, you know, a particular link if it needs to go over to your online form for someone to register or to another web page. So it's a great free tool where you can keep the colors of your branding and you can actually customize a button to have the button say what you want it to say. Which, which is excellent to do, and it's, I think it's one of the things that Kelly has said several times, and you've heard me say um, for over the last couple of years, branding is elementary um, as you go through um, authordom, and it's really critical, whether it's, it's images, whether it's illustrations, whether it's, it starts with your logo, it's your colors, it could be your, the font usage you do, it could be even the way you lay things out. Yes. Or you may, branding also could incorporate just, you know, you may have some quirky sayings that are just very unique to you that all becomes part of that persona. So this is just another, and the things that we're talking about today really does incorporate the enhancement of who and what and your book are all about. So branding is really critical and having uh, buttons that are reflective of what you want to represent, say, um, shout out, fill in the blank, really is is important. So, and it could be as simple as register. It could be buy book. 
<laughs> it exactly. could be call me fill in the blank. That's right. <laughs> yeah, whatever it is, you get to write in the the words that you need. You get to pick the color. You've got the options of shapes, and it's the magic word free. That's right. So we like that. All right. So Kelly, what about someone? Um, before we go up to our next break, let's see if we can get this in. What? Let's say that we're doing a program, um, and maybe they're. Uh, might be a little nervous, Nelly. Maybe they're there or, or, or Ned, or maybe they don't quite have it together um, and have all their memory points together. What kind of tool would you recommend that they might use to help cue them up? Oh, I, there's a great one. And once again, like you said, the magic word, it's free. It's called Cue Prompter, and that's um, cueprompter.com. And basically, it's a free teleprompter service where you can take, you know, obviously your desktop or your laptop. You go ahead um, on cueprompter.com. You'll see that there's a, a box at the top where you go ahead and um, you can copy and paste whatever content it is, the points that you want to make in your discussion or if you're recording a video. And the great thing is with that tool, you can choose if you want, you know, white text on a black background or vice versa, whichever is easier on your eyes to see. You can also control the speed of how the text will start to scroll up the page. So just like a regular teleprompter, when people look at it, it you can set the speed so that you sound like you've got, you know, a normal, you know, rhythm to your speaking presentation, but you can have your content right there in front of you for reference, and it just works very well to be able to have a tool like that, and you don't need to know any kind of, you know, coding or you don't need any extra software. You literally just go to cueprompter.com, put your information in that you want to use to present, set the speed that you want, and you're good to go. So with that, I, let me just say this, because we're, we're right on top of another break, but <clears throat> if you are doing this and you're doing something where you have a live, your webcam's on, on your computer and you're talking, it's really important to have it on a slow, probably a little slower, because you don't want to be looking down on your computer and actually like you're reading, because you won't be making eye contact with your audience. That's so right. what I would suggest you do is you probably bold it up, and you have it so you're, you're looking at the very top line a little bit bigger so you can just see it. Just like like if you're looking at your cheekbones, <laughs> right below your eyes, you can just see it. It just comes up and it's going to disappear. So you're going to you know have to be fast here, but it's just really to 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 uh, kind of goose your memory a sec, um, and then you can add in and maybe add limb as you go into the next one before the next line goes up. But the, the but the great thing is you get to play with these things. Yeah. And the second great thing is. It's the magic F-R-E-E -E word. All right, we're going to be right back. You're listening to Author You, your guide to book publishing. Kelly Johnson, my favorite geek girl, is with us today, and we are talking about amazing, awesome tools that are F-R-E-E. -E. I'm Judith Riles. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Since 1987, Color House Graphics has set the standard for quality book production. Whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run, depend on Color House to help you. You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing with Judith Bryles, we will provide you a discount on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll-free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. When Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. 
Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing questions. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, we're talking about awesome apps that are our favorite thing, F R E E. And they are a variety of things that you will use, um, whether it's for writing. Um, we're actually talking about ways to, we're going to get into some marketing um, uh, apps here coming up. And that you can use for title creation, for blog creation, for making sure you have the right keywords. And I'll get into some of that. But there's a variety of things that you want to take advantage of. So Kelly Johnson is with me, my favorite geek girl. She is the founder of Corner uh, Cornerstone Virtual VA or Cor- Corner Wait a minute, Cornerstone Virtual Assistance. I should say this right. And Kelly can be reached at kjohnson at cornerstoneva.com. But we've talked about Wufu, which was a free app for making online forms that could be just incorporated into MailChimp without doing a Excel spreadsheet. We've talked about uh, short keys, and we've talked about a uh, fun, fun app. The teens love this one, Wordle, um, <laughs> as well as glassy buttons and few prompters. So, Kelly, let's come back to you have one that you like to play around with called Cool Text. Yeah, and what's Cool Text all about? Um, and once again, that's the website is just cooltext.com, C-O-O-L-T-E-X-T. And once again, it is a free tool. It's a graphics generator for web pages and anywhere where you want to use some what they call, quote, unquote, cool text. So what I love about it is when you go to the website, you'll see that there will be a list of different options. So, for example, they'll use, like, the word, you know, burning, and the, the word literally looks like, you know, flames are coming out of each letter. Or if you want to use, you know, a, a text that looks more like, you know, has like some ice crystals on it, but it literally has the words that it will have that effect or something that looks really cool about it, where once you pick whichever effect it is that you like, so let's say you pick the one with, you know, it looked like flames were coming out of each letter, you go over and click on that option, you type in whatever text it is that you want, you can pick different sizes, you can change the font style a bit, and then once again, you can go ahead and download it and save it as an image and then have just, again, a really cool way that you can kind of pump up some text and have it actually display as an image on your website or your blog. So it gets exaggerated or it takes on its own little life or um, how do we describe this besides yeah, saying exactly. it's cool? I, I like how you said it sort of takes on its own life where it's, it's a nice visual punch because it is just text that you're doing, but it gives it that little bit of extra pop and visual effect. So it really will make, you know, if that's just maybe a key word or a key phrase that you really want to stand out like on a web page or in a blog post, it's a great way to be able to do that. So you know, let's jump over to keywords because one of my ones that I love that people need to figure out is the keyword spy. Yes. Dot com, an app. And that's also F-R-E-E. <laughs> but make sure that you don't, because it, it automatically defaults to, the, to domain. So you want to mm-hmm. click the other magic button, which will be the search. 
and that you can go in and you're the, the whole thing about keyword search most of us um, will for example if we put in publishing if you put in the word publishing you're going to get millions and millions and millions of link related things via Google search but if you put in self-publishing now we're going to get still get millions but less in millions than overall publishing but if we put self-publishing in Vermont now we're going to get less, 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 less. Mm -hmm. And could we put in self-publishing book coach in Vermont? Oh, we now we narrow it down <laughs> less, 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 less. So the the idea for using these things with punch is to make sure that it's not just a keyword. Maybe publishing is your bang, you want to blow that out. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe there's a couple of other words that you want to incorporate it in that would be maybe narrow people to you. Mm -hmm. And you could bring that all together. And Keyword Spy is a great tool to use to find out what is. We, you know, we used to always go to Google Analytics, but Google Analytics started to change the game a little bit and became more difficult to play with it. Yes. And yes. that so Keyword Spy has come up that we really can find. That you can go in very quickly in a nanosecond. You will know how many people are searching for this phrase, and it comes up immediately. Oh and give suggestions for variables for you. So you can start playing around that way. But it, it's, it's helpful to know what's the big word that people are looking for, and then you add in what's called what we call buying phrases. So we have the, the initial search, but now how do you get people to transition to buy you or buy your book? That's where little those wonderful adjectives come on that will keep leading the arrow to your door, so to speak. Yeah. Right? Does that sound right, Kelly? Did I say Absolutely. that right? Yes, and as you mentioned, I, um, it's always important to think about, as you said, looking at the overall, as you mentioned, just book publishing, but then as you kept drilling it down more specifics, just how you can really help to hit your target audience. And the other aspect of Keyword Spy that I know we really like in using that tool is because so many people um, use WordPress for their websites, this is a great tool as well where a lot of you have a plug-in called maybe like all-in-one SEO or you have a plug-in focus on SEO where you go into your WordPress site, pull up a page or a post, and there's a section to make sure that you fill in keywords. So remember that while you're using tools like this, also go into your websites and your blog posts and make sure that you're filling in those fields as well to really make sure that you're helping to increase your online presence. Yes, and, and let me add to that too. Since I'm, I'm someone who does four blogs a week over two sites, <laughs> five blogs actually a week over two sites that um, it's important that you don't cookie cutter this because each blog there may be a commonality but there's a uniqueness to it Absolutely. so that you need to do there may be some common words you will always use but there are also going to be some added on so make sure that you incorporate those um, with it so so keywordspy.com it is the magic word free and I wanted to hook that into our um, cool text that Kelly brought up because I thought that was a great idea. All right, Kelly, tell us about Icon Finder. I know that we, a lot of times, this is great for blogs because yes. you want to add images and buy. We haven't even got into that, but for all our listeners that make sure you do use images. And Kelly, why don't we, before we get into the Icon Finder, why don't you make some comments of what you find with your posting that you do for many clients where is there more ideal placement for images than not? Yes, and that's a, that's a great point. So when you're on your blog post and you're adding an image, I know a lot of times the image might be the first thing that you want to show in the blog post and then have text, you know, be right next to it or right under it. And actually one tip to keep in mind is the search engines like to look more for content um, versus an image first. So just make sure that if you are posting an image with a blog, and you should be, <laughs> that go ahead and just put, even if it's just a sentence or two first or a full paragraph, put some actual text first and then go ahead and put the image in because the search engines are reading just like humans. They want to pick up on that content first and then they'll look at images and any of like what they call alt text or any descriptions of images you have after that. So just make sure to have some content first in your blog posts and then put an image in there. So and then I'm going to add on and say it would be really ideal if you do one or two sentences above the image 
that you have your key word phrase used in one of those sentences. <laughs> Absolutely. So they pick it up. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. All right. Oh, so leading into that, as you mentioned, Icon Finder, um, and that's just iconfinder.com. It's a large directory of just various icons. So whether you're, you know, looking for maybe a stop sign as an, you know, image or a check mark, or there's just a, you know, tiny icon image that you need to incorporate into a blog or a web page. This is a great directory. It's free that you can go and, you know, type in whatever the word is of what you're looking for. See all the different options that come up. Um, and then you can download, you know, that as an image. One thing to be aware of on the icon finder is that they will have listed next to it, you know, if there is any specific requirement or just like a caption that you might have to include with the icon. Most of them don't have any, um, a lot of them don't have those restrictions on it. You can pretty much just download it and it has like a Creative Commons license with it where you're, you know, free to use it without worrying about copyright issues. But do just make sure to double check that for any icon that you do pull off of that directory. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. So, well, does it, do you have to say, I pulled this from um, Icon Finder or can you just use it? I mean, how do you, I, I, have to, I have to tell you, I've been noticing some of the blogs are putting more credit lines with some of the images, but some of them I know that are common usage, and I'm, it's, it's almost feels like a little overload, but I'm not so sure. Do you have any right, thoughts, and Sarah? Think, and that's a great, and that's a great uh, question and a great point, Judith, because as you said, I think sometimes even when you don't have to have a caption line, you might see some people have a, like maybe a more general statement about where they found it just to help make sure that they are in any compliance with, you know, any kind of guideline that might be out there. But with the icon finder, um, for each icon, whatever you pick, when you click on a specific icon, it will, you know, say next to it if there's any, if it's, you know, a Creative Commons license where you don't have to, you know, something you don't have to worry about having a statement like that, or it'll let you know if there is some kind of statement that you have to put with the image when you post it. Got it. So maybe if you're you're concerned about that, then you could do it, if you're talking about a blog, you could post at the end of your blog by your signature line, or maybe just at the end of the blog itself before your signature line. And by the way, all of you, you are doing a signature line. You like to put the picture in and who you are and a little information. And I mean, I have a very detailed one. And you can look at the example if you go to thebookshepherd.com and look at my blogs, you'll see at the very end, it's consistently the same thing that goes into that. All right. So... Um, you know, anyway, what you could do before we forget, a few seconds before our next break, final break, but what we want to do is put uh, just before your signature line with your photo, you could put thanks to or, you know, photos or images came from and then you're covered. All right? Absolutely. So I think that would cover that fairly clearly. All right. With us is Kelly Johnson. She is um, with Cornerstone Virtual Assistance, and what she does is she specializes working with authors and coaches to manage their technical and creative and administrative projects for your business. In other words, she makes your life easier. I'm Judith Riles. We'll be right back. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 
303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207. Or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. You know, throughout the hour, we're talking about some of our favorite things, which are cool websites and apps and things that you can use. And the great news is that they're all free um, there are more uh, customized or premier uh, versions that you can use for some of these if you're going to be, um, uh, you need, the demand is there. The only exception might be you get a free trial with Snagit, but there's a lifetime that you can do for 50 bucks, which is well worth the investment. You will use this <laughs> over, and, uh, there is not a day go by that I don't use Snagit. Oh, same, same here. Um, I, I call it my, my duct tape in my toolbox. <laughs> exactly. That's right. It, it, is, it is part of duct tape. That's right. We, it's my, yeah, it's my all-purpose tool. <laughs> we need a duct tape app. That's what we need. All right. So, Kelly, we have gone through Wufu, Short Keys, Wordle, Cool Text, Glassy Buttons, Icon Finder, Q Prompter, Snagit, um, and, and keyword spy. So let's jump to a, a one that I think that few people know about that I think is really critical to have, and especially for authors, because here's what happens. Once we get our book done, we think we're done. No, editing comes into play, and it's not a first, second, third round. And by the time you're to the third round, which is what we do with our books, that there is such a dramatic change of what's happened that the original Word document doesn't even look like it. So what is one to do? Well, you need to know about PDF to Word. Kelly, what do you want to say about that? Yes, so and that is the website as well, pdf to wordcom And basically, a lot of times, as you said, when people are forming documents or if they're getting them from somebody, they might be sent a PDF version, and they need to actually have it converted back to a Word document so that they can, you know, make some edits and make some changes and send it to whoever they may need to get it to. So it's a free tool where you can go to pdf to wordcom um, upload your PDF, tell them you want it converted to a Word document, you give them your email, and they'll send it to you. So it's a great way where if you don't have, you know, especially I know like the Adobe software, they're, it's wonderful software, but unfortunately it's not always very cost effective and you might not need to use it often enough to make an investment in Adobe software to be able to convert, you know, a PDF to a Word. So a free tool like this makes it very handy. <laughs> So now I'm going to add back to that. When you get your book back, and by the way, um, all of you, once you have your book laid out, you need to make sure that whoever does the layout sends you the total PDF. So you have this. So then um, if you have revised versions, whether you work with them again or you work with someone else 
or you want to extract sections and uh, incorporate that in another piece of work that you're doing on, you need to have access to it. So make sure that you make it a standard operating procedure when you're done with your book that you get the final PDF after yeah. all corrections are in and then you can go to this little magic tool and get it back into a Word document if you need to use it. So highly recommend this, highly recommend this and do that on. All right, so tell us about the font. Ah, so yes, um, it's, it's dafont.com, so it's D as in David, A-F-O-N-T dot com. And basically, once again, this is a library of free font styles that you can download. So sometimes, you know, once again, maybe there's a particular look that you want to have with some, you know, content or text that you've got. And sometimes what automatically already comes, you know, on your computer, whatever software was installed, might not always be a match for what you want. So here's just another free tool that you can go out and see some different font styles, see if something grabs your attention as a good match for what you need, and you can download that file. Yeah, and sometimes they're quirky and some fun. So I, 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 it doesn't always make sense to go way, way out. But there exactly. could be just a light variation. And I'll tell you where this comes in handy if you're doing um, presentations, uh, a lot of people have always made fun of me because when I do presentations, I put my slides into, oh my God, gag me if it's Times Roman or <laughs> Verdana. Or any of I actually use a very broad uh, comic sans. And mm -hmm. people say, oh my God, I can't believe you do that. You know why? I can walk into a ballroom and go back 200 plus feet and my slides are, I mean, I'm talking about the words, are crisp. Yes. You can read them. There's, there's, uh, there's body to them versus these thin, bloody lines. So you need to keep that in mind. You've got to have, and certainly in some corporate, some corporate people may go bonkers if they saw Comic Sans. <laughs> but I'm telling you, in a major audience that where I you know, spent so much of my time, 30 years on the platform internationally, that it worked. It connected. People could read them. There was never any question. And I think that is so critical um, if you're on a stage and using slides that have a word on them. Yes, and I also yes. always did them in bold. I always made everything bold so it had an added pop to it. So Defont is a good tool to play with. All right, and let's talk about Marketing Grader, Kelly, because I know that I've played with Marketing Grader. I've written this up several times in the author resource easing. Um, and, I, and I should say this, for those of you who are subscribing to it, guess what? This month, the June one that comes out is going to be your last free issue. It runs 40 to 50 pages. It's going to be a huge bonanza issue with a lot of the extravaganza information in it. Um, but from July onward, it's paid subscription. How you or if you're a paid-up member of authoru.org, you get it free. But it's going to be five bucks a copy. It's fifty pages every month. I mean, we're, it's it's bigger than Time Magazine. So what can I say? I All right. Always, so with I always that, learn so much from it. <laughs> MarketingGrader.com is a great tool. Wonderful tool to do a checkup on something that you all need to have called a website. So, Kelly, jump into that. Um, yes. Mar uh, once again, it's marketinggrader.com, and it's a free tool that's put out by a company called HubSpot. And this tool is fabulous because when you go to the marketinggrader.com, you'll see that there's just two fields that you have to, f to fill out. You just put in the URL of your website and your email address. And then once you go ahead and click Submit, you'll see that it will pull up a report. And basically what they do is they will rate that website that you put in, and it will give it a score. Um, the total that you can get is out of 100. So, of course, you want to be as close to 100 as you can. So you'll see your overall score, but then what it does is it breaks it down into five different categories. So they break it down into blogging, social media, SEO, lead generation, and mobile. So in each of those different areas, they will have a checklist, and they might say, for example, under blogging, you know, what they're using to evaluate to give you that total score up to 100, is they might say, okay, here's a checklist of six items, and looking at your website, 
for under blogging, you've got you know five of the six completed. So you can see when you click on it to get more detail what it is that you have completed and what they recommend that other item is that you go ahead and complete. So between having the suggestions of blogging, things you can do with your social media through your website, with your search engine optimization, you know, lead generation, how you can get more people on your mailing list, and then mobile. You know, once again, I know this is something that more and more people are trying to be very conscientious of is, you know, how does your site, is it re what they call responsive? Does it render well on a tablet, on a smartphone? So they also give you some suggestions for that. All right, so we have like four minutes left. So let's hit on two more. One, Instapaper. Yes, Instapaper is my one of my new favorite tools, and this is great for authors as well if you're doing research or I know a lot of times how many of you will open a new tab or a new window in your browser saying, oh, there's that website, there's a great article on there, I want to remember to read it later, or oh, I wanted to check out you know, what information was on this site, and then you tend to forget, and you ha or either that or you have about 50 different tabs open, and you can't remember what they all are. I love Instapaper because it's a free tool. You go to instapaper.com. You go ahead and set up an account. It takes about two minutes. You drag what they call their Read Later button up into your bookmarks on your browser. And any time you're on a web page, if there's something you want to remember to read later, when you're on that web page, you just click that Read Later button in the bookmark of your browser, and it will automatically save that URL so you can go back and read it at any time. And it also syncs up with your smartphone, with your tablet, on your computer. So it's a very easy way to track different websites that you want to make sure you save and archive and have. <laughs> So it, it seems that that's terrific um, because I'm guilty. I, I will have 20 different um, tabs <laughs> open. I, I mean, it's just a mess. All right. One other one I wanted to share was, and I've, we've mentioned this before, um, is aminstitute.com. Yeah. And that's A M I N S T I T U T E, A M Institute, created by the American Marketing Institute. And it's a great way to measure the clout. And I'm not talking about your clout measurement, um, K L O U T. Um, right now, what I'm talking about is the emotional, the spiritual, or the intellectual clout, the, the pull-in of a title that you would use, whether it's a book title, whether it's a blog title, or whether it's an article title. It's a great way to just play around and see what it does. Most copywriters are happy. It goes up to 100, 1 to 100. Most copywriters are happy with a 30 to 40. We want to see you get higher. And I can tell you, we had uh, one title we played with. I did it at a workshop here. Um, in our author use circles that we had on a Saturday morning and I one of our um, members is working on a book a uh, field guide to the moon and he's a stargazer and he his his title which had field guide into it actually scored 50 I mean it's certainly respectable and 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 would have worked but we played around with it a little bit and he got it up to 80 which is skyrocket that's a skyrocket and it, it, and the new title is What's Hot on the Moon Tonight. So yeah. with that, we've had a hot program. Kelly Johnson, my favorite geek person who you can find at Virtual Assistance. Um, is, is, do I have that right? The CornerstoneVirtualAssistance.com, is that correct, Kelly? No, CornerstoneVA.com. Cornerstone so you can find Kelly there at CornerstoneVA.com if you need help. Kelly's the person that is our go-to person. I'm Judith Bryles. You've been listening to Off You, your guide to book publishing. Thank you so much, Kelly, for being with us. Oh, thank you for having me. All right. Take care. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryle.